Hi everybody, welcome to this webinar. My name is Alexander Rignat and I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Qtra. Today I would like to present the technology behind our magnetic refrigerators and show you how to carry out a typical low temperature resistivity measurement using our L-type cryostat. To start with, let me take a minute to introduce our company Qtra. At Qtra, our mission is to provide cryogen-free sub-Kelvin cooling for science and technology. We focus on easy-to-use turnkey cryostats to support scientists in their fundamental research and to accelerate the development, testing and pre-characterization of quantum hardware and related electronics. Our cooling platforms offer continuous sub-Kelvin cooling independent of liquid cooling media, notably the rare and costly helium-3. We view this essential to providing cryogenic temperatures in a simple, compact and cost-efficient way. Moreover, we believe that non-helium-3 refrigerators are a key requirement for future scalable applications of quantum electronics. Qtra is based in Munich, Germany and was founded in 2018 as a spin-off from the Technical University of Munich. In 2019, we moved to our new production and head office in downtown Munich. We are happy to report that, since then, we have been able to gather an excellent team of physicists, engineers and software developers with many years of hands-on experience in cryoengineering and low temperature research and who share our vision of easy-to-use cryogen-free refrigerators. It is thanks to this team that we can offer advice and in-depth technical support for our customers. And of course, we are excited to have Quantum Design as a strong partner to complement our services and to provide professional assistance and support for our customers in North America, China, Taiwan and Southeast Asia. Qtra is an active part of the scientific community, doing our own R&D to constantly improve our magnetic refrigeration technology and to come up with innovative, truly cryogen-free cooling solutions. This is reflected, for example, in our close collaboration with quantum hardware companies and university research groups. Thanks to our close connection to TUM in particular, we have several master and bachelor students on board working with us on their scientific projects. Our own scientific background, partnerships and active exchange with scientists from all around the world give us a good understanding of the pains and needs that arise in everyday lab life when working with low temperature equipment. This helps us to build products that make low temperature research more pleasant and safe. Now let me start the technical section by briefly introducing magnetic refrigeration, the cooling technique our products are based on. Magnetic refrigeration is a well-established technique that was proposed and implemented back in the 1930s. It can be used to generate sub-Kelvin temperatures by exploiting the magnetic field dependence of the entropy of a spin system. This is illustrated in the graph on the right, which shows the entropy of cerium magnesium nitrate, a typical spin 1 half refrigerant, as a function of temperature and magnetic field. At high temperatures, the spins are randomly oriented and their entropy is constant. In contrast, at low temperatures the entropy of a spin system is a function of the magnetic field and the temperature T. In this regime, reducing the magnetic field from point B to point C under adiabatic conditions, this is while keeping the entropy constant, will result in a decrease in temperature. For this reason, magnetic cooling is also referred to as adiabatic demagnetization refrigeration or ADR for short. A variety of materials can be used for magnetic refrigeration. As shown in this graph, some promise high cooling capacity, while others can go down to very low temperatures. The choice of the cooling material will therefore depend on the intended purpose and cooling requirements. Now let's have a look at how ADR is technically implemented to build a sub-Kelvin refrigerator. In a cryogen-free setup, we use a closed-cycle cryocooler to provide a main thermal bath of about 4 Kelvin. It will be used to pre-cool our ADR cooling medium to a temperature where the total entropy of the material is dominated by the magnetic entropy, this is the contribution of the spin subsystem. 
The cooling medium is connected to the cryocooler through a heat switch on one end and to the sample stage that contains the experimental setup on the other end. Finally, the medium is surrounded by a superconducting magnet, which allows us to magnetize and eventually demagnetize the medium during the ADR process. At the beginning of the ADR process, the heat switch is closed and both the ADR cooling medium and the attached sample stage are cooled to the cryocooler base temperature of about 4 Kelvin. Then, the cooling medium is magnetized by driving a current into the superconducting coil. The heat of magnetization is released and dissipated in the main thermal bath provided by the cryocooler. After the maximum magnetic field has been reached, the system relaxes back to its base temperature. Now, the heat switch is opened, breaking the thermal connection between pre-cooling unit and the cooling medium. By reducing the magnetic field adiabatically, the temperature of the ADR cooling medium drops, cooling the attached sample stage. Usually, the medium isn't completely demagnetized. Instead, the magnetic field is tuned to settle a target temperature and the remaining magnetic field is used to compensate for thermal leaks from radiation, heat leaks through the support structure and wiring, as well as heat generated by the experimental setup. Thus, by further reducing the magnetic field and fully demagnetizing the cooling medium, the temperature can be stabilized for a limited period of time, the whole time, which is typically several hours. Once the magnetic field has been reduced to zero, the process can be repeated. The time to regenerate the cooling medium, this is to remagnetize and thermalize the cooling medium, is typically between 1 and 2 hours, resulting in duty cycles of 70 to 95%, depending on the cooling medium used. The ADR cooling principle comes with a couple of advantages. With ADR cryostats, the cooling process, even into the millikelvin range, can be realized completely without the use of cryogens. This makes their operation very simple and safe and decreases maintenance costs and downtimes. Due to their direct magnetic temperature control, our cryostats allow to stabilize low set point temperatures very accurately. But they also offer continuous temperature sweeps from the subkelvin regime up to room temperature. Finally, thanks to our custom-made compensated magnets and an optimized system geometry, residual fields at the sample position are very small in our cryostats and can be additionally shielded using mu metal if necessary. The most obvious disadvantage of ADR is the limited hold time available for the experiment before the measurement needs to be paused to regenerate the cooling medium. Fortunately for experiments and applications that really require permanent cooling, the limitation of one-shot ADR can be overcome. In fact, Uter is the first supplier to implement both one-shot ADR and continuous ADR, or CADR for short. In a CADR cryostat, multiple ADR units are combined and carefully balanced to provide continuous cooling down to the sub temperature range. To illustrate the working principle of CADR, we consider a system with two ADR units where, similar to the one-shot configuration, the first unit is connected to the main thermal bath via a heat switch. In contrast to the one-shot setup, now a second ADR is added. It is on one end connected to the first ADR unit using another heat switch and on the other end to the sample stage. These two units will work together to extract heat from the sample platform and to pump it into the 4 Kelvin thermal bath. At the beginning, both the first and the second ADR unit are fully magnetized and connected through their respective heat switches. Both cooling media as well as the sample stage therefore initially have the temperature provided by the cryocooler. First, Unit 2 is decoupled from Unit 1 and demagnetized, cooling the sample stage down to the target temperature. Now, the first ADR unit is disconnected from the bath and demagnetized. This time, however, we settle a temperature well below the set point temperature of Unit 2. If we close the heat switch between both ADR units, ADR number 2 can be regenerated while at the same time the temperature of the sample stage is kept constant. 
After unit 1 is depleted, the connection between the two units is opened and unit 1 is regenerated at the temperature of the cryocooler. This procedure can be repeated infinitely to provide continuous cooling at the sample stage. In this way, the one-shot limitation of ADR cryostats can be overcome, making a completely cryogen-free continuous operation at sub-Kelvin temperatures possible. Besides the serial two-stage configuration which I've just presented, many different CADR layouts can be realized, including serial or parallel configurations and even combinations thereof. The optimal configuration depends on the demands of the experimentalists and the specific experimental conditions and our tech team is happy to discuss the best solution for you. Before we start with the hands-on laboratory part of this webinar, let me give you a quick overview of our cryostats, which are based on ADR or CADR technology. Qtra offers three types of cryostat, each optimized for specific customer applications and needs. First, the S-Type Essential, a versatile and ultra-compact sub-Kelvin system that offers a large sample space for complex customer setups and can serve, for instance, as a platform for the continuous operation of quantum detectors. Second, the S-Type Optical, a compact sub-Kelvin cryostat derived from the S-Type Essential. It offers free beam optical access and an easily accessible sample stage as well as ultra-precise temperature control. Third, our L-Type Rapid, a fast characterization tool offering top loading of samples, continuous operation down to 300 mK and one-shot operation to 100 mK with sample cooldown times of less than 3 hours. To give you a better understanding of the architecture of our cryostats, we take a closer look at the S-Type Essential. Beneath the casing, the S-Type Essential, just like any other cryostat, is based on a vacuum vessel equipped with a closed cycle cryocooler. One distinction, however, is the rectangular shape of the vessel, increasing the available volume compared to a cylindrical system, while maintaining a small footprint. Covered by the radiation shields, the system has two main cooling stages, one at 40 Kelvin and one at 4 Kelvin, both of which are coupled to the cold stages of the cryocooler. Additionally, the system can integrate up to two magnetic cooling units. Each cooling unit consists of a cooling medium, a superconducting magnet and a heat switch, which is used to connect or disconnect the cooling medium to the 4K plate during the regeneration or cooling phase respectively. While the magnet and the heat switch are mounted onto the 4K plate, the cooling medium is thermally connected to the sample stage to cool the experimental setup. The S-Type Essential offers a large, rectangular sample platform which can accommodate a complex customer setup, detector arrays or other low temperature electronics. Finally, the system is mounted in a modular 19-inch rack, with one module holding the cryostat and another module including all system electronics as well as space for customer electronics. In this configuration, the S-Type Essential offers continuous cooling at 300 mK and one-shot operation down to 100 mK, with a hold time exceeding 3 hours. Additionally, the system features one large sample platform and two large user ports for custom wiring such as RF lines or optical fibers. Our second system, the S-Type Optical, is a sub-Kelvin cryostat with free beam optical access. It is based on the same geometry as the S-Type Essential, with a cryocooler and 40K and 4K cold stages. However, instead of a large sample platform, the system features a cold finger type sample stage pointing out of the cryostat top plate. In this configuration, the cryostat can provide free beam optical access through several windows, with a small working distance to the sample. Additionally, the cold finger type sample stage enables a straightforward sample exchange. The cap can simply be removed by loosening a couple of screws to access the sample platform and mount an experiment. To reduce the vibration level, the S-Type Optical's cryocooler uses a remote rotary valve, which is mounted on a heavy ground plate. 
During operation, the rotary valve can be decoupled from the dewer, reducing vibrations to the low micrometer regime. In the standard configuration, the S-Type Optical features one high-capacity ADR stage for one-shot operation to 800 mK with a hold time exceeding 30 hours at 1 Kelvin. The sample stage has a diameter of 41 mm and offers enough space for a stack of piezo positioners. With our optional low resistance wiring, the positioners can be operated over the whole temperature range from room temperature down to below 1 Kelvin. For high frequency measurements, up to 4 RF lines can be added. Finally, Qtra offers the L-Type Rapid. While relying on the same technology as the S-Type cryostats, our L-Type cryostats feature a larger vacuum vessel. Similar to the S-Type systems, it is equipped with several radiation shields and a 40K and 4K cold plate. The larger volume, however, allows to integrate up to four magnetic cooling units, arranged in an essentially circular pattern. As probably the most important component, the L-Type Rapid features our proprietary puck-based top-loading sample exchange mechanism. It allows to transfer a sample automatically to the low temperature stage, where the sample is cooled to the minimum temperature of 100 mK within less than 3 hours, as we will demonstrate later in this webinar. In the standard configuration, the L-Type Rapid offers continuous cooling at 300 mK and one-shot operation down to 100 mK. The sample puck comes with 40 DC and up to 4 RF connections. For material characterization, the L-Type Rapid can be equipped with an optional sample magnet providing up to 5 Tesla magnetic field. Now, in the last part of this webinar, I would like to demonstrate how to use the L-Type Rapid and our instrument control and measurement software for a simple low temperature experiment. I will demonstrate how to carry out an AC resistivity measurement on a titanium sample where we track the superconducting transition at around 500 mK and suppress the transition by the application of an external magnetic field. The L-Type Rapid features our puck-based sample transfer mechanism, so the first thing to do is to prepare the sample on the sample puck. The sample puck has a platform which can accommodate customer setups and samples of up to 36 mm in diameter and 100 mm in height. The puck connects 40 DC lines via bondable terminals as well as up to 4 additional RF lines via mini SMP connectors. After preparing the sample on the puck, a final test can be carried out on our sample puck station. In this example we just checked that all solder connections are good using a standard voltmeter. However, the sample puck station features BNC connectors for all puck lines, allowing for complex room temperature tests involving more sophisticated measurement electronics. Once we are sure that our sample is prepared properly, the sample puck is picked up using the sample transfer cage. A special mechanism locks the sample puck in the transfer cage and the puck can be safely transported to the cryostat. The automatic sample loading process can be started in our instrument control software with a few clicks and guides the user through the sample loading process. First, we make sure that the puck is secured in the transfer cage. Then the transfer cage is inserted into the vacuum lock. The automatic gas handling system starts the pumping process and the door can be closed as soon as it is indicated by the software. Once sufficient vacuum conditions are reached, the gate valve is opened and the cage is loaded into the cryostat. The puck is firmly mounted onto the sample stage and automatically detached from the transfer cage. The system is now cooling the puck down to the base temperature and is ready to perform measurements. And I want to show you now how this kind of measurements can be done using our Python-based open source control software. We start the software by pressing the Qtra launcher symbol on the desktop of the supplied measurement PC. From the launcher we start the instrument control software by clicking the play button. Then we open the user interface by clicking the GUI button. You can now log into the graphical user interface by entering your username and password. 
The graphical interface is structured as follows. The main menu is located on the top of the window and is used to configure the control software and open further dialogs. The upper part of the left side shows the status of all essential system parameters. The main control panel is located on the lower left side. It contains multiple tabs to display different system components. The number of these tabs may vary depending on the system configuration. The ADR tab provides the magnetic temperature control settings and is used to perform measurements in the magnetically controlled temperature regime between 100 mK and approximately 8 K. The heater tab provides control over the system heater and allows for continuous temperature sweeps from base to room temperature. If the cryostat comes with a sample magnet, the next tab allows to control the ladder by setting the target field and field ramp rate. The sample tab is used to control the automatic sample changer. The cryostat control panel is used to start the automatic cooling routine and to stop and suspend the system. Finally, the devices tab gives an overview of all active devices and controllers of the instrument. So let's start an experiment. In our example, the cryostat has been cooled down to the cryocooler base temperature and we now want to start an experiment by loading our sample puck. We move to the sample tab and enter a sample reference and experiment name. Then we hit the load button and the software guides us through the sample loading process. After finishing the process, we can monitor the cooldown of the sample puck in the history viewer. By navigating to history and selecting the appropriate time duration and thermometers, we monitor the cooldown of the puck until it thermalizes at the cryocooler base temperature. This process takes around one hour and the resulting temperature curve looks like this. Now we would like to demonstrate the measurement of the superconducting properties of a polycrystalline titanium sample, which is supposed to undergo a superconducting transition below about 500 mK. For the purpose of our measurement, we have mounted the sample on the sample puck and contacted it in a four-point configuration. We use a signal recovery 7230 lock-in amplifier to measure the resistivity of our sample. To prepare the measurement, we define our measurement configuration in the configuration tab and choose the SR7230 as a detector and the sample temperature and magnetic field as environment parameters. Now we want to explore the magnetic field dependence of the resistance at 300 mK. Therefore, we first initialize the continuous magnetic cooling. We navigate to the ADR tab and enter a target temperature and rate. By hitting the recharge and play button, the ADR units automatically regenerate and cool the sample down to the desired target temperature. The continuous operation is stabilized after approximately one hour. Then we navigate to the sample magnet tab to program a magnetic field sweep from 0 to 0.1 Tesla. We start the measurement by pressing the play button. Meanwhile, we can monitor the recorded data in the scans window. Of course, measurements can be fully automated using the integrated Python script editor. To show how this works, we program a set of temperature sweeps from 100 mK to 700 mK at different magnetic fields. We execute the script by pressing the play button and can monitor the executed command in the terminal window in the lower right corner. The results can be examined in the scan tab, where additional features such as sample curve fitting tools or the possibility to combine different scans are available. We choose the first sweep at zero magnetic field and find our superconducting transition at approximately 480 mK. By combining all measurements in the scan tab, we find the expected suppression of the superconducting phase as a function of the magnetic field. Once our measurement is completed, we unload the sample by pressing the unload button and follow the instructions given by the control software. If we check the terminate experiment checkbox, our measurement data, together with a log file and system parameters, will be automatically zipped and stored on the measurement PC. Through the QTR loader, the measurement data can be easily accessed by clicking the data button. I hope this gave you a good impression of our L-Type Rapid and how it can be used for fast, 
low temperature measurements. So to sum up, in this webinar we have introduced the ADR and CADR cooling principles and shown how they are implemented in our cryostats. Depending on your needs, you can choose between our compact S-type platform, allowing for either rack integration or optical access, or the larger and fast L-type rapid for rapid prototyping and material characterization. Thank you for joining this webinar. I hope to talk to you soon about your low temperature research and your cooling requirements.